Hey guys, what's going on? It's another beautiful night in Vegas, and it's time for another steakhouse video. I'm thinking of making a steakhouse video once a week now. I'm just gonna eat my way through the entire city, going from steakhouse to steakhouse. And today, I'm taking you to the SW Steakhouse inside the Wynn Casino. Let's go in and check it out. The one is one of my favorite casinos. It's brightly lit inside with beautiful, classy designs. And there's cool artwork and sculptures all over the casino. They have a new show that's just opened this week called Awakenings that's replacing the old La Rev show. I really like the old show, so hopefully this new one can live up to its predecessor. I've seen almost every show in Vegas, so I'll definitely be checking out this new one too. They have many high-end shops and fine dining restaurants in here. They definitely try to cater to the high roller. At the table games, I did not see any minimums for less than $100 for blackjack. But luckily, if you're staying at the Wynn, there are more affordable options close by. It's pretty close to the Pepper Mill restaurant, which is this classic diner that's been open for decades. This restaurant used to be open for 24 hours, but I don't think it is anymore. Not many places are 24 hours anymore ever since the pandemic ruined everything. And there's a couple taco spots next to it. One of them is called Tacos El Gordo. That's very popular as well. You'll often find lines at the door to get their tacos late at night. I think their tacos are good, but I personally wouldn't wait in line to get them. SW Steakhouse is located just down these stairs by Bar Parasol. This restaurant is right next to the Lake of Dreams too, and they offer outdoor seating by this so you can enjoy the show while you're eating. This place gets super busy, so reservations are highly recommended. They do have bar seating in here as well. And I think this restaurant is open from 5.30pm to 10pm each night. Here's a look at their menu. This is one of the only restaurants in town that serves certified authentic A5 Kobe beef. Another place that serves authentic Kobe beef is Bazaar Meats in the Sahara Casino, which is a pretty popular steakhouse as well. I ate the Kobe beef at Bazaar Meats one time, and it's like butter. It literally just melts in your mouth. It's so tender. But it's extremely expensive though. As you can see here, it's $300 for 4 ounces and $75 per additional ounce. It looks like the cheapest steak they have here is a filet mignon for $74. This is definitely a pricey restaurant, and if you're going to get some wine and sides along with your steak, you're looking at spending a couple hundred dollars here at least. And they do have a vegan menu here as well. I think it's kind of weird to eat at a steakhouse if you're vegan, but it's nice that they have this option. They have an extensive wine collection that's over 50 pages long. Here's a sample page that I just randomly flipped to. I'm not a wine connoisseur or much of a drinker myself, but man, some of these bottles can get super expensive. Like that 1982 bottle at the top, that's almost $12,000. You could buy a car for that much money. Even if I was a multi-millionaire, I would not spend that much on alcohol. After looking through this wine menu, you're looking at spending at least a few hundred bucks on a bottle of wine, minimum. Here's a look at some of their drinks and specialty cocktails. Every meal gets served with their complimentary pretzel bread and a side of seasoned butter. It's super soft and easy to pull apart. And it came out really warm, moist, and fluffy. Every steakhouse seems to offer a different type of bread. In my last video at Binion's, they served a crunchy sourdough bread. And this one is a buttery, soft pretzel bread. If you like the flavor of pretzels, you'll love this. For our first course, we got the butternut squash bisque for $24. It comes with Alaskan crab, coconut milk, and a citrus sage creme fraiche. And also has diced carrots, onions, and celery. This was absolutely incredible. Probably one of the best soups I've ever eaten. This came out really hot, and it was so creamy and luxurious. 
and it's pretty comforting to eat too, and especially nice as it's been so cold out lately. And it has chunks of that delicious sweet king crab in there, and with all the other ingredients, it's just packed full of flavor. And butternut squash tastes very similar to pumpkin too. The soup is perfect for the fall and winter. For a second course, we got the Maryland Blue Crab Cake for $34. This comes with a palm souffle, which is just a fancy French way of saying a salted fried potato chip, and a malt vinegar aioli. And the malt vinegar aioli basically tasted like a light tartar sauce. This was just lightly breaded and absolutely packed with chunks of crab meat. And these were really delicate and soft and falls right apart. These tasted warm and slightly toasty. It had some citrus flavors too. It was a little bit tart and a little bit sweet. This green vegetable here is very bitter. But these are pretty good and not too big portion wise so I can save room for everything else. For our main entree, we got the 22 ounce pepper crusted Chateaubriand for 160 bucks. The service here is so good, they plate everything out for you. You don't even have to do anything. This is pretty pricey, but it normally serves two people. And I've never eaten this before, so I thought I'd try it out. The steak is cooked in the oven and roasted with all its juices, and it's made with beef tenderloin. It's a prime cut that comes from Midwestern ranchers. And this was very popular in the suburb clubs in Las Vegas in the 1960s, too. The waiter told me that Chef Bobby Flay ordered this one time while he ate here. And if it's good enough for Bobby Flay, it's good enough for me. Even though this is usually meant for two people, I nearly finished it all. I came with an empty stomach and a hungry appetite. The waiter was even surprised by how much food I could eat. Some people said that I need to do a food eating competition with the amount of food that I eat each day. Maybe one day I'll do one of those competitions. The sauce on the side is a rich and savory sauce that was reduced from the drippings of the steak, demi-glaze, and wine, I believe. Actually, the steak didn't even need any sauce. It tasted great without it. The steak was extremely tender, juicy, and succulent. I ordered it mid-rare, and it was cooked nicely. And it comes with some shallots and green onions, too. This is definitely one of the best steak dishes that I've eaten. It was absolutely delicious and perfectly seasoned. And for our side, we got the Maine Lobster Sardinian Noki for 29 bucks. It has shaved black truffle, Parmesan cream, and chunks of lobster. The Noki were pillowy soft, but slightly chewy. Noki are like Italian dumplings, but they similar to pasta. It just absorbs the flavors of the sauce very well. This was like a decadent mac and cheese almost. This is really rich, creamy, and velvety. And the black truffles just put it over the top. And there's just some small pieces of lobster spread throughout this that gives it a slight sweetness. The big open door to the right takes you out to the patio seating by the Lake of Dreams show. One annoying thing is that the show starts playing every 15 minutes, and from where I was sitting, I couldn't see the show at all, but all I could hear was a loud blast of music coming from outside. It might be annoying if you're trying to have a conversation with somebody and then the loud music just starts playing. But this place gets pretty packed in general and can get pretty loud from everyone talking. And now it's finally time for dessert. Here's some of their dessert wines. And here's a look at the dessert menu. They got all your classic desserts. Creme brulee, carrot cake, I love creme brulee, but I always like to try the most unique things that aren't available at other restaurants. The funnel cakes are very popular, but I was pretty full from all that steak, so I thought the funnel cakes would be too much for me to handle. I decided to get the Rocky Road ice cream for 18 bucks. It comes with a chocolate almond crumble, toasted marshmallows, and a sweet cream ice cream. And they put on a nice little shell here for you, pouring the molten hot chocolate over everything. It warms everything up and melts away the chocolate dome, revealing the hidden treasures inside. This is like a chocolate lover's dream. This was really a rich and decadent dessert and a perfect way to end such a satisfying meal. Overall, this restaurant was really good. The service was top notch. There was a constant flow of people coming by to check up on me and asking me how everything was. 
My waiter was very friendly as well and very attentive. The butternut squash soup and the steak were the highlights for me. The total cost was about $300 for everything. It's expensive, but it's worth it for the quality of the food and the service. And this is a pretty nice restaurant for a special occasion too. I also liked how most of the people dining here were dressed up in at least business casual. Unlike when I ate at the Palm Steakhouse and people were just wearing whatever. But I don't think SW Steakhouse would deny you entry if you weren't wearing business casual, because I did see a couple people dressed fairly casually. But at least they weren't wearing a basketball jersey or anything like that. The only bad thing was how loud it got inside, especially the music from the Lake of Dreams show. And I heard the outdoor patio seating by the Lake of Dreams is difficult to come by. It gets booked up weeks in advance, so plan ahead if you intend on eating here. This was a great restaurant, great steaks, I'll definitely be coming back here. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed our video. If you want more Vegas videos, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, or leave a comment down below. Tell us what you think of SW Steakhouse and the Wind Casino in Las Vegas.